in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to fish effectively using two of our brand new products, that being the link and the crimps. So the lake we're going to be fishing is the wonderful day ticket lake, Barlow's Lake 1. The swim that I've chosen is peg two, and we've had to wait a little bit of time, unfortunately, because the weed boat has been out in the swim. But as soon as I got here this morning, I actually see one show in this swim, not too far out as well. And that might be because the weed boat's been out there, he's been churning it up a little bit. And so we're told, everyone that moves in after the boat being in, in the swim, tends to get a few bites. So that's me thinking a little bit. The lake is mega, mega busy. Almost every swim's been taken. So we're quite lucky to actually get ourselves a peg. So I've never actually fished this peg before, but I've seen fish showing out in front of me. So with that in mind, that's why I've chosen this peg. Right, so the first rig is ready to rock and roll. Hook pattern wise, you may have noticed that that is a brand new hook, which is a wide gate, long shank hook. Now, I'm using it on Ronnie style, and it's a size seven hook that. So, you know, normally I would probably use a six or a five, but that seven with that wide gape on that hook there, it still looks like quite a large hook. So that is the pattern that I prefer to use. Now I've obviously used the crimps on our brand new link mono filament. Now the mono fit this stuff I've actually been testing for well over two years now and I've been using it on the island. It is definitely one of the best hook links I've ever used. I'm very fussy with my fishing and my hook links. I do a lot of boat work so I see a lot through the aquascope and what they look like on the bottom of the lake bed in gin clear water now. It's obviously crimped at both ends and how I've used the crimp is with the crimping tool, I've used the large hole first and made sure that the opposite end of where the loop is, that is sat flush to the tool. So when you crimp it, crimp it down with the large first and you'll notice the other side is sat out by about a mil and it flares out and then that takes the contours of that loop perfectly. I then put it into the medium slot send it home with the medium slot so it's nice and tight and then that will never slip through. Obviously going up to the lead arrangement from that point on, I'm fishing this with a lead clip. I'm going to actually be attaching a small mesh bag of pellets on this. Wouldn't normally do that with a lead clip because if you don't hit that clip perfectly, a lot of the times that lead can fall off. And what you've noticed is I've actually put the tail rubber right down flush on top of the lead clip which is something you wouldn't normally do because it's very weedy, this pond, and you still want that lead to eject. Now, what I do is I tend to cut down the clip of the lead clip because I like that tail rubber sitting flush. So there's only a tiny bit of that lead clip that's actually sat inside that tail rubber there. That's fished naked all the way through. So that is what I'm going in with first. That is the Ronnie rig. Obviously, gone through them components there, little mesh bag. I found where they've been showing is a bit of a slope. It's quite a steep slope that comes off of the shelf. And I'm going to fish at the bottom of that slope there and just fish for a bite on this rod. I'm going to have a little lead round in the pond for the other two spots. I think I'm going to fill it in on one of the rods and then fish for a bite on the third rod. But at the minute, I want to get this rod out there as soon as possible because the fish have been showing out there. And I think that's what's going to do to do for a quick bite.
Well, we've got two rods out. They're both fishing fairly short in nine and a half wraps, both on the exact same thing. So the Ronnie rig with the old crimped booms. Now this one, I'm going to fish out in the open water, a little bit different from the others. The old faithful hinge stiff rig. So the boom material is exactly the same as what I'm using on the Ronnie rig. It's the 35 pound link monofilament. And then obviously we're using our rigidity for the chod section there. But that boom, you'll only ever have to tie one of them. I think I've got one boom that I'm still using from Christmas, which was like eight months ago. I'm still using that exact same boom. So all you do is just chop the chod section off and retie that all the time. And you can leave them booms until obviously the wear and tear takes its toll on them. The lead arrangement is exactly the same as the other two. Like so, I'm going to fish this out in the open water. So we'll speak about the spot and everything whilst I'm baiting it. I found it out there already. It's at 20 wraps and that's what I'm going to fish over the top of it. Right, let's get this out in the pond, get some bait out of there. Okay, well, we've got our final rod out, finally. It's taken most of the day, but uh, as it always does with these, film, with these filming trips. But yeah, so I'm fishing out. Actually, there's a gravel seam out there that I found. I was gonna fish another rod tight towards the island, the second island out there, but I've got these other two near islands, which seem like madness not to at least fish the open water. It, I think it's about nine, 10 foot out there and one's just jumped right on the zone as I'm looking out there at the minute. So yeah, wise move to, to fish out in the open water. Now that's where the weed boats concentrated most of its time. And like I said earlier on, the fish have been following the weed boat out there. The guy said that they were all flying off, of, you know, sort of following the boat round around the back of it. And there was a big group of them out there. So like I said, it's wise to fish out in the open water, I think, anyway. And we've got that hinge stiff rig out there. The spot is a gravel seam and then it's where it meets the silt. And I think it's exactly 20 and like, 20 wraps and two foot sort of thing. So that's the rod I think is gonna do us a big one, hopefully. All I'm gonna put out there is 18mm S7s and 15mm S7s as well. Bit of a mix up. I'm gonna put 15 spoms over the top of that rig and then reassess the situation, obviously come tomorrow morning. But I think that's when it's gonna to happen. Tomorrow morning is when I feel like we're gonna get our bites. She's flying out there. Got me eye in now. Perfect. Right, spawns are all out there, everything's baited, and we are ready for this evening. Now, I've put about 15 spawns out there, right over the top of the rig. What I tend to do is count every single spawn that lands bang on top of the rig, that's one, that's two, etc., etc. So I've probably put about 300 spots out there. There's a, 
about 20 spots all in all. I had a couple that went a little bit wayward, but 15 have got bang on top of the money of that S7 mix. So tomorrow we'll go a lot more in depth of how to fish with crimps and obviously them new hook links, new hook patterns, and all the weird and wonderful bits that I've got in my tackle box. We'll go a lot more in depth about that tomorrow morning and show you obviously how to get the best out of them items. So we've got a couple more hours of sunlight left. I may refresh them two other rods, the little mesh bags of pellets, but I'm a little bit reluctant as of yet because we've seen one show on the right-hand rod and a coot come out to the left-hand one and got all scared. So I'm just going to leave that for another hour or so. Probably got about two hours left of daylight now. We're going to have a little bit of dinner. Fingers crossed one of them rods whips off sometime soon. Well, how about that oh, for a Farlow's beast? All 35 pounds, four ounces of him. Utilizing, using them crimps, the wide gate, Oy, easy beast. Long shank hooks and that brand new link material. Absolutely amazing. What a carp, what a creature and what a place. Yes. Oh. I've obviously shown you the rig that I've decided to use over at Farlow. It's obviously the Ronnie rig, but what I want to talk about is using crimps and how it can benefit you. Now, one of the main benefits for myself is it retains a real high knot strength. So if you're a little bit unsure about your knots and you're not quite confident that you're getting the most out of your knots, then turn to crimping because Right, so I've been using this a long, long time. I've been using it snag fishing as well with braid over on my syndicate, Savage Bites. It has never, ever let me down. Now, the other benefit, obviously, is you can get your rigs to the millimeter perfect because you're not relying on a slip knot or the usual knot that you may use, a blood knot, etc. You can use the crimps and then pull that loop down and then get it to the millimetre perfectness, measure it off of your tackle box, send the crimp home, and then you can continue to make more and more rigs at that perfect length. Now we've got two different hook link materials as well. These are both crimpable materials. One's a fluorocarbon, and the other one is a monofilament. They're both called the link, and they come in two different braking strains. You've got the 25 pound braking strain, that will be for your small crimps, and then you've got the 35 pound braking strain that'll obviously be for your medium crimps. Now obviously, to crimp your hook links, you're gonna need yourself a tool. Now our pliers here, our crimpable pliers, they have got two grooves inside them, one for your medium crimps and one for your small crimps. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that my pliers say L and S on them. When they go into production, they'll say L and M on them. Now. When it comes to actually using them, you sit your crimp inside that groove, and then what you do is where your loop is, you have the crimp, it's roughly about half a mil out. What I tend to do is have it flush one side, so the opposite end of your loop, you want that flush on your pliers, and then where your loop is the other side, 
you'll notice the crimp just sticks out ever so slightly. And that is because when you pull the pliers down, send the crimp home, you'll notice it flares out and then that takes the contours of that loop perfectly. So you get a perfectly round loop within your material. Now these crimps are obviously versatile for whatever sort of rig you would like to use. You've seen me using the Ronnie rig on this session, but you can also use it alongside the hinge stiff rig, a chod rig, or a combi rig. So it's very versatile with what sort of rigs you would like to use in your angling. So if crimps is something that you've never used in your angling before, I am sure it can definitely benefit you. Like I say, if you're not too confident on the knots that you're using, then the crimps can definitely solve that for you. Right, well that's it for our trip at Farlow's. We've had a lovely time over here and obviously shown you a few of those products that we've got coming out with the new hook links and the new crimps that you can use in your fishing to catch yourself some fish. So it's time for me to get the rods in now and head home.